With all the chatter lately of the potential dual GPU Radeon RX Vega card, I couldn't help but reminisce slightly on the first no compromise dual GPU card, the Radeon R9 295X2. Released in April of 2014, over three years ago, the R9 295X2 was a technical marvel. Unlike previous multi-GPU cards, this was not a throttled or cut down variant like cards of yesteryear. This was a full-blown Hawaii-based GPU. Featuring two full-featured Hawaii XT cores with 2,816 stream processors for a total of 5,632 running at an overclock speed of 1,018 MHz thanks to a custom Asetek liquid cooling solution for the cores and a fan and copper heat sink cooling solution for the VRMs. Sharing the 4 gigs of VRAM gave the total onboard capacity of 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. But we all know without some trickery from DX12, we'll only have 4 gigabytes addressable for crossfire gaming loads. Now let's not forget that this puppy loved to sip down power, rather guzzle. And with the dual 8-pin connectors exceeding the normal spec for PCI Express, you had to be careful with which PSU you used to ensure that you were able to deliver the amperage that this card needed to operate properly. All of those memories aside, we wanted to see how well it fared in but the year 2017 games at 4K with high detail settings. Unfortunately, some of the biggest titles that people would like to see for AMD performance, such as Doom or Battlefield 1, were released in 2016. Maybe we'll touch on those later if there's enough demand. Well, we pulled the 980 Ti out of our workstation since we wanted to pair the 295X2 up with a Ryzen 7 1800X. Okay, maybe it was because I really wanted to put that card on a silver board just to see how it all looked together. We got it all paired up with the Ryzen 7 1800X clocked at 3.9 GHz with 16 GB of DDR4 at 2933 on the X370X Power Gaming Titanium. Suppose it's time to see what it's made of when put up against these 2017 titles at a 4K high preset with anti-aliasing disabled of course. Mass Effect Andromeda was the first game that we tested and on the first run it was not good, but after realizing that we didn't have a crossfire profile active we ran it again and found, well while on the planet we got an average of 54 FPS while lows at 1% came in at the 34 FPS mark and it bottomed out at the 0.1% at 31 FPS. Overall a good showing for this title. Prey was up next, and since AMD showed RX Vega running this in Crossfire, we expected good results, and we were not disappointed. Bringing in an average of 66 FPS, but 1% lows did drop to 45, and the 0.1% lows fell all the way down to 30. Still, with these lows, it remained playable without many issues at all. It's rather enjoyable, in fact. Moving on to Resident Evil 7, one of the first titles to come out this year, it didn't fare well. We did see reports that Crossfire was working perfectly fine on newer RX model cars. However, once we were able to get Crossfire kicking in on this one only one time, mind you, and even then it flickered the entire time because we had to use AFR or alternate frame rendering, but with even with only one GPU running, we did manage a 39 FPS average with 1% lows at 31 and a tighter 0.1% at 30 FPS. So between 30 and 39 FPS, while not the best, it definitely could have been worse. Dirt 4 could be a poster child. Even if we considered raising the settings with this one once we saw the excellent scaling that brought the average FPS up to 97 at 4K, mind you and the 1% only dipping to 82 with the 0.1% staying well over 60 FPS coming in at 72 FPS. And something about this game looks completely different at 4K than it does at 1080p. It's like the assets scale very well or something. And last but not least, we had to test Sniper Elite 4, since it is the only one in the bunch that would allow us to test out multi-GPU on DirectX 12. And it did not disappoint. Breaking the 60 FPS barrier at the same scene that AMD used to show off the RX Vega running this game, with 1% lows dipping down to 49 and with the 0.1% lows touching 41 FPS, it managed to remain smooth throughout gameplay. And if you were on something like a 4K FreeSync monitor, it would have been a very, very good experience staying within that range. So at the end of the day, the R9 295X2 is holding its own reasonably well. 
But don't think for a second that it's all sunshine and roses. Multi-GPU gaming is still far from perfect, and it seems to be a second thought for most of the time as developers these days, and that's quite the shame. When done right, the results are excellent. But for those who have ever had to deal with Crossfire or SLI issues would likely agree it can be quite the pain at times. Either way, it's nice to see such a huge investment over three years ago can still crank out some acceptable frame rates in 4K titles that launched even in this year. Well guys, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them in the description below. If you'd like to see more content like this, just let us know. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we'll catch you in the next video.